Hi guys, it's Nina. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing something very exciting today. This is a 30 by 48 gallery wrapped level 3 artist slot canvas. And uh, I love working with these big ones. It's so exciting. So our colors today are going to be Payne's Gray from Golden's and then Arteza's Violet and Deco Art Americana Decor Classic Black. And I love this new one, Deco Art Americana Decor in Metallics in the Soft Gold. And I have my Liquitex Basics in the Thalo Blue. What I'm going to do is do my straight pours and then I'm going to pour my base coat around it in a thicker ring as a flow extender because that worked really well last time. So we're going to start with my Payne's Gray as the bottom color. And I'm just checking the consistency. So my paints are, um, let's see, I've got four colors and I want two cups. So that's about half a cup per color. And I'm going to do that probably a few times. So, okay, here we go. Uh, my paints are mixed with Liquitex gloss, medium and varnish. Um, and then I added paint. So I had, I started off with 120 grams of gloss medium and varnish, and then I added 60 grams of paint. And then I added about 20 grams or so of water to each one. So it was almost 200 grams total. And then I added about 200 grams of Floetrol, which gave me my 16 ounces roughly. So here we go. I'm gonna put about half a cup in. The paint's gray. And I'm gonna put a little bit of gold. Probably not going to measure anything else, just the first one, so. Because I've realized how you put it in, you know, determines how it comes out in your pour. So I'm doing smaller layers instead of just one big mass. Oh, I don't want to put the paint's gray in yet, do I? Put a little bit in. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of gold on top. So we're going to pour this one and then I'm going to pour the flow extender around it. Okay, wind, cooperate please. We're going to do a pretty one. All right, here we go. From up high onto the canvas. Ooh, that's purple. And then there's our blue. And there's our Payne's gray. If the wind starts blowing it, I'm going to catch it. <laughs> stop there. Okay, so I'm pretty much going to do that same thing a couple more times, and then I'm going to pour the flow extender. You can look at those and watch. So there's my paints. Put gold in. Put some blue in this time first. It's a little different. And I'm kind of using gold between the blue and the purple. day. I'm doing my last cup now. Um, when I did the big one, the Gorgon's Grotto, my paints were very thin because that was a huge car carrot canvas. Sorry, not carrot. Canvas. That was a huge canvas and I knew I wanted to stretch the paint all the way um, across the canvas. So I made it thinner so that it would do that very nicely. And I've used based this recipe on that one. Um, but this is just slightly thicker paint because I really wanted to keep its cell shape. So I did one the other day with Floetrol, just Floetrol as a pouring medium. And I, you know, it looked beautiful. I got great cells, but then when it was drying, it just kept splooging all over the place. Like the cells didn't want to stop growing, I guess, because there was no binders and the pouring medium in there to keep them, you know, in their shape. So I like using the, the uh, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. It's one bottle, it's not, I didn't add varnish to the gloss medium, it comes that way in its own bottle. I'll show you guys a picture of it. So that's the gloss medium and varnish, and then I put the paint in, and then after the paint, then I put the a little bit of water after it's all stirred up, and 
after that, I add the flip-up. So, and it seems to work great because the cells stayed beautiful in that pour. They, they kept their shape nicely and they moved easily across the whole canvas. That whole 48 by 60 is pretty cool. So, that was good. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these so I'm not tempted to futz with them. I have some more purple left. I'm just going to get that in the cup. And, sorry, this is a violet from Arteza. I love those pouches. I have to say that is so cool because that was the end of my pouch and it just you know i also had a, a big tube of paint golden's Payne's gray in the metal tube and it was a little harder to get it out of that than it was to get it out of the little artesa pouch i'll tell you that for free so okay so that one's got the nice blue that one's more purple hopefully this one's gonna have more purple and we're gonna do this over here here we go and I'm kind of going to go slightly towards the middle more because I don't want the center of it on the outside over here where it's going to get tilted off faster. I want the center of it more towards the center of the canvas. And there's my friend the wind. Hello, darling. Can I make some pretty designs for me? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, so now let's take my flow extender. Can you get a shot of this consistency. Actually, no, that's still a little thick. I'm going to add some water to it. Show you on camera so you can see. So this is the, I'm going to stir it and leave a, leaving a little bit of, of a mound, which I don't really want it to do. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. It's probably four or five grams. Just stir that in really good. Because we want this to be thinner than that paint. We want this to be able to slide. Yeah, see now it's sinking. When I do that, well, a little bit more maybe. I'm gonna have to add some to that too. And your consistency is everything. If you are a beginner and you're just starting out, consistency is the biggest thing that is gonna make or break your painting. Your paint won't slide and it won't move you're gonna be miserable <laughs> it's not gonna go well it's not gonna be fun so this is good there we go okay so now i'm gonna use this and i'm gonna pour a lot of it around these rings okay here we go and we're gonna go around and i'm putting a lot down i am because i want it to move easily and i did not put a base coat so this is my reaction to wind is every time I put a base coat down before I pour, the wind and the sun start to dry it up. So my compensate for that, I've started right now, it's almost sundown, so I don't shoot at 12 noon anymore. <laughs> well, I do sometimes, but um, I try not to. I try to shoot now at this time of day when it's better. So this is Payne's Gray with black. This is not just Payne's Gray. Let me check the consistency on this one. And um, so instead of putting the base coat down, yeah, this is already getting thin. Instead of putting the base coat down and then pouring and having the base coat start to set up, this is my solution of not getting the base paint to set up before my, everything is on the canvas. And it worked so good so far. So far, so good this morning. I do know how to talk. <laughs> okay. All right, so the other thing that I did this morning was I kind of spread this part out a little bit just to get to our corners and just to get it sort of moving on the canvas a little bit so that it can slide. And I am going to go out to my corners. So here I'm getting my paint on my corners because I do want it to be able to slide easy. And we'll get the edges in just a minute. Okay, so with this base coat color background color I the last one I did I had black the first one I did I had black but it was too black it was too dark for what I really wanted so then I used Payne's gray and that was good but it wasn't as dark as I wanted so this is half black and half paint so and this is all I'm not worried about it because what's happening is the wind my friend is blowing and she is popping bubbles and those cells are developing as I sit here and talk to you, because we have such a nice thick ring of flow extender around
around all the, first of all, there's way more than enough paint on there, but also there's that thick ring. It's about an inch and a half in some places of, you know, nice thick paint to let it slide and move. So we are good. So we're going to torch it real quick and then we are going to tilt. To tilt. The beauty of tilt. Okay, I am not going to torch the outside. I am just going to torch this inside. So one of the reasons that I really like that Liquitex gloss medium and varnish as opposed to just their pouring medium is because when this stuff is in here and you use a big torch, you get amazing cells. So can you kind of get in close over here so they can see when the cells start to pop up? Here we go. I am not going around the corners at all. I am just staying in the middle. There we go. That's good. Here we go. Now, before you tilt, take a deep breath, focus, think about what you want to happen, where you want the paint to move to before you just randomly start moving it. You got to move it a little bit to see where the weight of it is able to tilt this like this yeah okay that's pretty I'm gonna go off to that side close to the corner I don't want to go off the edge yet it's moving nice and easy start to slow down a touch bring the paint back to the middle Bigger canvases, don't get intimidated just because it's big. Do the same thing you would do. I can't turn this one around, unfortunately. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too big. So we go back to the middle. And then we're going to take the paint down there. Oops. We're going to fall off the edge of the table to process. Okay. So there it goes. It's going close to the edge. We're not going to let it go off yet. the middle go down measure <laughs> p-o-u-r and <laughs> shot <laughs> my husband made that joke the other day oh, that was pretty funny okay I can't actually see much except for the different height corner. Come on. Okay, I'm going to go stand over there.
not crazy about that very dark black edge over there. So we're going to get the paint kind of in the middle near that thing. And then I'm going to tilt this butt on. Okay, so you might want to stand over there so you can see this. Top of the paint is beautifully. I'm gonna leave a little bit on there. It's too much though. Okay. Okay, here we go. Over the bottom edge one more time. Okay, that's pretty. I'm gonna look at it for a second and then we'll decide composition wise if it's what we want. But that's really pretty though, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna just this way to get it to sell up on that edge there. You bring the paint into the middle line. I'm going to go the other direction. Stretch the paint out on the edges. And let some of those cells develop. I love this. It's gorgeous in there. That's so pretty. Okay. I'm just going to see if I can get the edges to stretch real fast. So I'm going to go up high. go over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. So what I'm trying to do is get the paint that's sitting on this edge to stretch and sell. So that's why I tilt it sharply for a second or two and just come back down. All right, that's it. I'm done. So this is a few minutes later when I was looking at it from my perspective on the table. I love how dark that Payne's Gray really shows up a lot, especially with the gold. I know this is after it's been moved into my drying shed. I stayed there for a couple days. And this is the dried result after a few days. It was so amazingly beautiful. This part right here with these little golden floating cells on top of that Payne's Gray and that river moving up of the thalo blue and that line of teal and gold and the violet over there is just so beautiful this oh my god <laughs> over here we've got all these cute little cells and i really really love that you see the contrast between the thalo blue and the Payne's gray and you can see both of them so clearly and they still did blend because that turquoise color was not in the, my, any of my paints that was the thalo blue and the gold mixed and over here, this is my favorite part with this dark center and these little tiny gold and violet cells. And then as it spreads out, so this is what I was talking about when I said smaller layers and more colored rings around your pore. So rather than, you know, look at those little tiny cells floating on that dark background, just so gorgeous. So this piece is actually very, very special to me. Um, this was a commission from a lovely gentleman that he wanted to give to his wife for their wedding anniversary. So this is yesterday, today, and always for Tina. Happy anniversary from your loving husband, Mike. This was so much fun to do. I really, really love this piece. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Bye.